it would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment and to underestimate the, de the, the determination of the Negro. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legiment, discontent will, will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrong deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must, co we must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. The marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people, for many of our white brothers has evidenced by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devote, devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as a Negro is a victim of the unspeak un unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a small ghetto smaller ghetto to a larger one. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote, and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. that some of you have come out here of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas where you quest for freedom, left you battered by storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. redemptive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, Go back to South Carolina, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, go back to the slums and ghettos of our modern cities, knowing that somehow the situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It's a dream deeply rooted in, in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out of the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Amen. I have a dream that one day out, of, out on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former, of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a desert state sweltering with the heat and injustice of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. 
I wow. have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day the state of Alabama, whose governor's lips are presently dripping with the words of our interposition and nullification, will be transformed into a situation where little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls right. and walk together as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exiled, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plains, and crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see Amen. it together. Yeah. Amen. Come this on. is our hope. This is the faith which, with which I return to the south. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair on, in a, <laughs> despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to